Please stand as you are able. The Holy Gospel today from the sixth chapter of John can be found on page 886 in your pew Bible, 868, 868. Jesus said, I am the living bread that came down from heaven. Whoever eats of this bread will live forever, and the bread that I will give for the life of the world is my flesh. The Jews then disputed among themselves, saying, How can this man give us his flesh to eat? So Jesus said to them, Very truly I tell you, unless you eat of the flesh of the Son of Man and drink of His blood, you have no life in you. Those who eat my flesh and drink my blood have eternal life, and I will raise them up on the last day. For my flesh is true food, and my blood is true drink. Those who eat my flesh and drink my blood abide in me, and I in them. Just as the living Father sent me, and I live because of the Father, so whoever eats me will live because of me. This is the bread that came down from heaven, not like that which our ancestors ate and they died, but the one who eats this bread will live forever. This is the gospel of the Lord. Thanks be to God. You may be seated. Friends, in Christ, grace be to you and peace from God our Father and from our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Um, I know, Andrea, I told you that I was Pastor John Peterson, uh, but I also want to let you know that uh, I came, from, uh, uh, came today from, uh, actually yesterday, uh, from Mankato, where for uh, the last couple of weeks I've been serving as pastor of senior ministry at Christ the King Lutheran Church. Um, up until about a year ago, prior to the time of stepping down, I was the senior pastor there at Christ the King. And so today I want to bring you greetings from all the folks um, at Christ the King Lutheran Church, a caring community committed to seeing to it that all people come to know Christ and make Christ known. In Paul's letter to the Ephesians, actually throughout all six of the chapters, he gives one admonition after another, after telling us all that God has done for us, then he gives us these guidances, the, the, the guidance and the instructions that we need in order to live our life for him. Here in chapter 5, from whence our, our reading came today, four times in this chapter, he tells the folks at Ephesus and every one of us, whether we're in Mankato or here in Oatana, to walk this way. Let us pray. Father, we thank you for the gifts of grace and love and the power that you instill in each one of us that, that gives us the, the opportunity to take those gifts and, and have them transform us and turn us into the people that you've called us to be. And then, Father, thank you that you give us such an abundance of your love that it can flow out from us into the hearts and lives of those around us. In Jesus' name, amen. In the movie that was made back in 1974 called Young Frankenstein, which every time in the movie when the name Frankenstein is mentioned, someone always says, no, it's pronounced Frankenstein. So in Young Frankenstein, the 1974 comedy remake of the 1931 classic film Frankenstein's Monster, Mel Brooks presents a scene very early on in the movie where the lab assistant Igor meets Dr. Frankenstein, who has just arrived by horse-drawn carriage at Castle Frankenstein. And so Igor meets him there, and, and here's Dr. Franken's Frankenstein standing there, and Igor standing here, and he has the luggage, and Igor picks up the luggage, and he's going to take him into the castle, and he says, walk this way, at which point Igor walks this way towards the castle. And then Dr. Franken, Dr. Frankenstein proceeds to walk in a very, what would consider a normal kind of way, and Igor says, no, 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 walk this way, and he demonstrates again, and the next thing you know, Dr. Frankenstein is walking this way. Four times, four times here in Paul's letter to the Ephesians, especially here in chapter 5, Paul tells the Christians at Ephesus to walk this way. 
He begins in chapter 5 when he says, Therefore, be imitators of God as beloved children and live in love as Christ loved us and gave Himself for us a fragrant offering and sacrifice to God. One of the most powerful words in all of Paul's writings is not grace, although it certainly is, or love, or mercy, but one of the most powerful words is a little three-letter word in Greek that's translated, therefore. This is a transitional conjunction that brings important concepts or ideas together to form a complete thought. The therefore, at the beginning of chapter 5, is there for each of us to make the connections that make our lives complete in the way that God intends them to be. Paul begins the entire letter um, to uh, the Ephesians by listing uh, a catalog of blessings that God has bestowed upon those whom He loves. Paul says, God has blessed us, God has chosen us, He has destined and redeemed us, forgiven us our trespasses, lavished us with riches, poured out His grace upon us. And then Paul makes the connection when he says, therefore. The therefore is there for the purpose of connecting all that God has done for us, all that God has given us, to all that He calls and empowers us to do as we live out our lives here in this place at this time. The therefore is there to inspire us, to move to action, to live our lives differently, to live our lives every day for the sake of Jesus Christ and His kingdom come to earth. Here now in chapter 5, Paul would want the Ephesians and all of us to remember and respond to all that God has done by walking in a certain way. He begins by saying, walk in God's love. He no doubt reminded the folks at Ephesus that God so loved the world, that He gave His only begotten Son, that whosoever believes in Him would not perish, but have everlasting life. I'm sure He reminded them that we love, we are able to love because God loved us first. He probably said, see what love the Father has for us, that we should be called children of God, and that is what we are. And no doubt Paul reminded them that it was when we were at our lowest point, it was when we were dead in sin that God showed His love for us by sending Christ to die for us, therefore. Therefore, walk in that love. Walk in that love and all that that love means, not only for our lives, but for the lives of those we encounter every day. Walk in God's love. A love that goes with us in the midst of the joys and the happy times of life, as well in the midst of the struggles and the tragedies that come to be a part of life as well. Paul goes on in the following verses to warn that there are challenges that need to be avoided. If we, if we choose to decide to walk in God's love, then there are some things we have to watch out for, he says. To walk in God's love means to intentionally avoid those pathways that lead off in different directions. Paul would be quick to say that, that God remains steadfast. God stays right where He is. He has a path before us that's always His path. And God would never send us off in any other direction, but there are those in the world today and in Paul's day that would want those that were following that path to come off in this direction or go in that direction, maybe just a little divergence, maybe just a little change over here. It won't matter. It won't matter to God. It'll be fine. And the next thing you know, you're walking down a path that God never intended. Let no one deceive you, Paul says. Let no one deceive you with empty words. There are a variety of groups and individuals that Paul may have been thinking about when he says that that there are those who would want to deceive you and lead you down any path other than the one marked out by God's love. And whether or not there were at that time, the thing that we need to be reminded of is that there are those today who would want us to walk down a path other than the one that God has set before us. To walk in God's love is to stay on that path that He has set before us and spells out clearly for us in His Word. Walk in God's love. Then Paul says um, in verses 8 and 9 of chapter 5, he says, walk in God's light. There he says, for once you were darkness. Not once you were in darkness, but once because of, because of, of all that was going on in the world around us, we ourselves were darkness, but now he says, 
you are in the light of the Lord. For once you were darkness, but now in the Lord you are light. Live as children of light. For the fruit of the light is found in all that is good and right and true. Once you were in darkness, Paul says, a darkness that descends on all of us because of sin. But now by God's grace and love and mercy, you are in the light and you are light. The very thing that Jesus says in the Sermon on the Mount, you are the salt of the earth, you are the light of the world, let your light so shine before others that people might see your good works and give glory to our Father in heaven. Those upon whom God's grace has been given, their position has changed from darkness into light. And Paul admonishes them to walk accordingly. Because they have to? No. But now because they can. Now because the pathway is set before them, the light is shining, Paul says, step into the light and walk in that direction. Walk in God's love, walk in God's light, and then the text we heard read just a few moments ago, Paul instructs us to walk in God's wisdom. Be careful then how you live, not as unwise people, but as wise, making the most of the time because the days are evil. So do not be foolish, but understand what the will of the Lord is. Understand what God has in mind, not only for you, but for all of creation and how each of us fit into that part of His plan. Among the variety of wildlife that you'll find living or probably more appropriately surviving in the Mojave Desert in the southwest United States, there are two birds that fly around every day. One is the hummingbird, the other is the vulture. The vulture searches until it finds the carcass of some dead animal because that's what it's looking for. It thrives on that kind of diet. But the hummingbird, the hummingbird flits around from one flower to another looking for the colorful blossoms of the desert plants. And in the process of moving from one plant to another, it gathers nectar. It brings new life through the process called pollination. The vulture lives on what was. But the hummingbird lives on what is and what will be. It constantly seeks new life. It fills itself with freshness and newness. Each bird finds what it's looking for. Paul would want to ask each of us the question today, what is it that you are looking for? What is it that I am looking for? What is it that we want out of this life? Because we have been given the privilege and the power to choose, Paul says, choose carefully. The world in which we live is filled with all sorts of things. Some are right and good and true. Others are clearly the, at the opposite end of the spectrum, and there's just a whole variety that are somewhere in between. Paul tells us to walk in wisdom because this wonderful gift gives us the ability to discern what is true and right and lasting. Wisdom insists that there, is, there has been, there is now, and will always be good and evil in this world, and that it is possible for God's people to choose carefully and wisely be, between that myriad of choices. And as we orient our daily lives around that which God has given us, around all that He has bestowed upon us, we have the power to transform not only our own lives and to see to it that we stay on that path, but we have the power to bring others onto that path as well. Is it possible to do that? Is it possible to walk in the way of insight every day? Is it possible to walk in the love of God, in the light of God, and in His wisdom? Of course it is, absolutely, but never Never by our own reason or strength, but always by the power of God's Holy Spirit that is at work within us. Lay aside immaturity, says the writer of the great book of wisdom in the Old Testament, and walk in the way of insight. Lay aside immaturity and walk in the way of insight. The author of Proverbs would not give us such a directive unless by God's grace it were possible for us to live and walk just that way. Perfectly? No. Faithfully? Yes. So, 
in a few moments, we will walk down this aisle and come and receive the bread and the wine of Holy Communion. We will receive the absolute assurance of the forgiveness of every one of our sins, but we will also receive the assurance that, that as we walk forth from this place today, the power and the presence of God are in us, around us, over us, and under us. So let us come today and receive that assurance, and then let us go forth. And every day, walk in the ways of God. Amen.